What's going on, Show Nation? It's Movie with Movie Gaming TV, and in today's video, I want to talk about a little technique that can help you with your timing in MLB The Show 20 Diamond Dynasty. This isn't like a huge tip, but it's something that I do occasionally from time to time, and I thought, why not? It costs me nothing to upload to YouTube. I don't know how YouTube is still free for you to be able to upload what kind of indie, you know, you can just upload any video at any time for free it's pretty amazing so i thought you know what i'm gonna go ahead and put this out there on my youtube channel in case this helps out someone i'd see I, I really to help your timing out i would recommend going and watching hitting tips 2.0 because in that video it talks a lot about timing and you're you know your timing a lot of the times is going to come down to pitch recognition recognizing the pitches quickly you know sitting on the fastball so you're not behind it i mean if you don't sit on the fastball it's not good. Uh, it's not good at all. They even talk about it in the commentary for the game. I think like, uh, who is that guy, man? He used to play for like the, the Cubs. He's one of the commentators. It's not Please Zach. It's the other guy. I can't think of his name right now, but put that in the comment section below. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, I think he might have been like a first baseman or something. I can't remember. Where's our MLB network? But anyways, let's get right to the point here. So here's a little technique that I like to use and specifically what brought this up is uh i i was having a lot of trouble for some reason hitting with joey gallo i just this year i was i'm you know i'm only hitting 279 with them but lately uh especially in the event i really started to turn up with them so let me tell you a little bit of a backstory joey gallo used to have a certain animation for his swing back in like mlb the show 18 and then in mlb the show 19 he still had that animation but mid-season they changed it up to a new animation they re mo his swing and they changed it up. And since it's been a little bit different, I've never really hit with it that well until now. And I, what I had to do to get my timing a little bit better and what I suggest that you guys do with your cards, uh, you wouldn't necessarily need to do this the way I'm going to do this, even though you, you can. I recommend doing this maybe like in Conquest if you're grinding out one of the maps, like if you haven't grown, gone through the entire a uh, big map here, you know, it'd be a really good spot to do it or going through one of these first or second name programs because you really don't need the difficulty to be that high at all. And you still should be able to win the game doing this. So I'm going to go to play versus CPU and we're going to go ahead and play against, it doesn't matter, we'll play, I'm going to play against the Royals because that's my favorite team. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with, uh, we'll go with an away game so we hit first. Um, basically here's the technique that I use to get timing down um, to a certain extent and this is really good uh, you know it's just a good way of going about it with your team it doesn't matter what pitcher we have uh, what we will do is I do want to put Joey Gallo in because he is basically um, who I want to talk about now do not use what I'm about to do do not use this specific hitting camera online stay with strike zone or use strike zone 2. i really like strike zone more than strike zone 2 but use one of those two cameras online but uh we'll talk about that more so this is a technique that i use uh with gallo um basically or just in general if i'm having trouble with someone's swing i'll go to gameplay and i will go to the show 15 which is an old uh camera that i used to use and i won't be the show 15. And what I'll do, we'll take this first pitch here, is I look at their hands and I look for like when they lock into their swing. Like there's a certain point, like see how he kind of twists the bat back? He used to not really like twist the bat back like that. So I, uh, I'll i go into this mode and uh, I'll just have the pitcher throw a couple pitches. And then uh, I can see when they get into that loaded locked position. And uh, so that that's one of those things you can't necessarily see in strike zone. But if you kind of like keep it in your head visually, I know I popped out there. But if you keep it in your head visually, um, you know, you can remember what their swing animation is like. Uh, I hope I can get to Gary Sheffield because I've really started hitting better uh, with Gary Sheffield uh, lately too. But it's a good way to just, you know, take a couple pitches, look at how your guy swings in a low risk environment to help with your timing of the swing. Uh, usually when I'm in strike zone view, I mean, it does have that view of you basically, um, it has that view of basically like how you're at the plate. Like if you're in a real game or in the batting cage, that's pretty much what you see in a way. 
Um, so I kind of like a, one of the timing mechanisms that I like to use uh, to kind of get in that perfect window of their swing window is a lot of times I use like a leg kick like with my cap right here. It's like I'm really paying attention to strike zone view. Let's go to strike zone view for a second. I'm really paying attention to uh, his stride. Like this stride is just goaded out of the 2018 uh, or the 20. Like his stride right there is just goaded. Like he just, I don't know. It, once you fall into the rhythm, it's really, really good. This is one of my favorite cards right now too, man. This is like just one of my absolute favorite cards. This is Willie Stargell. I love this card. I haven't even like really looked at this card from this perspective. Um, but his swing is so fast. It's like the fastest swing. Danny Duffy is getting us out. All right, so I'll I'll, uh, I'll pitch this next hit half ending and then I'll cut the video and come back and start talking more. All right, so we're back on offense now. Um, Mantle, uh, he's got a great swing too, really. It's just a real basic swing. Mm, so easy to hit with Mantle. Um, I'm not sure where Sheffield's batting. I'd really like to show you guys Sheffield once we get to him, but just like a really good way to look into uh, that lock window and start visualizing that lock window. Um, what do I, it, I compare it a lot to like a jump shot. If you guys have played NBA 2K, you kind of hit that certain spot. Like you kind of feel them like lock in when you're supposed to release. I mean, obviously you want to use the meter in uh, NBA 2K when you're shooting, but it's like this, if you were to turn that off, and you just know when you're, you know, I think you get like a shot boost in that game now when you turn it off too, um, like a green boost or something. It's just like that natural position of when they like, you know, when you're hitting, you kind of have your hands like normal, you're chilling. And then you take them to that like point where you're going to launch or lock in, or to, you know, use whatever you term, term you want. But um, you want to kind of go through and if you're having some timing issues or it's just it's a good way to practice with your players to kind of um, just kind of like know that sweet spot. And I think there is an argument. I think that, see, like, I'm not even 100% sure, to be honest with you. I've heard some different things over the years that, like, the swing doesn't really matter. I think, like, but it just feels like certain guys have slow. Man, are we really going to have to go and. All right, it's all right, anyways. I want to talk to you guys about something about Kluber, too, just because I know everyone's got Kluber. You ever watch Kluber's hands when you pit when he pitches? See how he kind of like holds the ball like this? I don't know. Something about that really helps uh, my timing out when pitching with him. Even though you really want to look at the meter more than that, you want to be keeping your eyes up on the analog meter. But isn't it weird how he holds the ball like that? Like it just seems like it'd be difficult to hold the ball like that. I, I don't know. I've always uh. I've always found that to be interesting. Sometimes I, whenever I seem to like pay attention to that too, I, uh, I don't know. It seemed to pitch like somewhat better with him. He's such a good pitcher this year. Do you guys have any timing pitch or timing techniques for certain pitchers? Uh, put them down in the comments below. I'm going to cut the rest of this cause I want to go back to hitting. Okay. So this is another card that I've really, um, uh, I started off really, really hot hitting with, but you guys can see his hands. I always think about his hands getting right up by like, kind of like his, like his right ear when he hits. Like, I don't know, man. Uh, I've been hitting a lot. It's just hard to hit from this view compared to, like, the other view. But I've just been thinking about that a lot lately. You know, he has that waggle. But then he really gets it almost back like, like Cody Bellinger or something to uh, to be able to hit. Um, it's just a good thing to I will always pay attention to. Like, if you get a new card, like, doing this really, really helps out just to kind of, like... I really think it's even better if you don't even swing and you just look at the... I'm going to say try to say, like, now when I think he's in, like, that lock animation... You know like now like i don't know it's just kind of like that certain part with his hands and uh kind of watching the stride watching the hands should help your timing out of like when it's like the perfect time to swing um that's just something i've used for a long time and again like it's just something i wanted to bring to you guys uh i, I don't know if anybody else does this or really thinks about this i'm i really wish they'd uh give me some more time to take out my picture in this situation they always do that in showdowns like you always got to call time Let's go here with Craig the Egg. Craig the Egg's really been beasting lately, man. Too as well. See the pitch from Duffy. I'm gonna ground out. I can't. I can't hit from him with the show 15 view, but I can look at their swing really nicely from it. 
So let's see, we got Gallop again. Let's take one more pitch. And then now that I know that he kind of twists his hands back just a little bit more, it doesn't, he doesn't just kind of, see how he twisted? You see how he takes them and then he just kind of puts them behind his head a little bit more. So I was like, I was always a little too early, but he really loads like a lot longer. See how I absolutely, that time, now I'm crushing the ball with him. So it's just one of those things, you know, like go in there and see where that load point is of when they kind of lock up into their load point. And that's going to give you kind of a, a visual cue. Uh, but you're not going to be able to see it from strike zone, but just knowing where that is and then taking it back into strike zone is pretty much the uh, is pretty much the point of this video, uh, essentially. So I, uh, I hope this helps out somebody. I don't know, man. I just... I don't know if it'll help out anybody. I think it will, but I wanted to put it on YouTube. Again, go watch the hitting tips video. I'm not gonna be able to stop hitting because now I'm having fun hitting. Let's see, this stars will swing. Look how he just, I wish we had like some higher pitch speeds on right now, but I can't switch that. Um, but look how fast, his swing is just so fast. If, uh, I I love Wagner. Uh, I think he's probably the best collection reward, but man, Sardo is right up there. We just got that new Miguel Cabrera. Like, I don't know how I missed that, but his hands are so fast through the zone that it's so nice to hit left on left with them, really, too. He's just, I don't know. I can't I can't stress enough how good that Willie Stardo card is. I can't, if, you, if you've if you used them or if you haven't used them yet, uh, what do you guys think about them? I'm going to go ahead and end the video, though, right here. Um, oh, actually, no, let me talk about one other thing. Let me talk about one other thing. So something else I've been really focusing on um, I was going to make this in a separate video, but I think I'm just going to throw this into this video right here. A uh, couple of other tips, just a couple of other quick tips. First of all, if, I'm going to click pause a couple times or hit, you know, call time a couple times. One thing I've been focusing on is really making my strike zone smaller. Um, I don't know. This is really helping me. So I'm going to throw it out there. Can I call time again? Oh, I can call time as many times as I want. I love it. So we got this top box, the middle box and the bottom box, right? What I've been trying to do is I've been trying to reduce my strike zone early in the count to just those boxes. Just focusing on those boxes. What's kind of nice too visually is the pitcher, he usually fits right in those boxes. I'm going to get picked off and now we're not going to be able to hit again. Gosh, it's all good though because I want to talk a little bit more about pitching. Now I like to pitch really fast, really fast. I've always been a fast worker, IRL, what I used to pitch and in this game. It's what every coach is going to tell you to do. But sometimes I do go a little too quickly. And I'm not saying to like take 10 years to pitch, but sometimes you wanna make sure you come set a little bit more. Just not totally, you know, do not be that person that takes like 15 seconds between each pitch. That's not what I'm trying to say. But what I am trying to say is make sure you take the time to spot your pitch in the spot you want. Uh, make sure you do that. Uh, I was playing against a top player the other day and he actually gave me uh, a little bit of feedback after we played. He said that like when I threw fastballs, I wasn't coming or when I threw a fastball, I was always like going really fast. Like I would set it and then I would throw it fast. And then when I was throwing off speed, it, he said like it took more time, like the time between when you came set or the time between when you spotted the pitch and actually threw it took a lot longer. So he picked up the read of like, all right, now I'm throwing a fastball and then when I was throwing off speed, I was like waiting later. So a fastball would have been like, oh, I set it and I threw it like that. I tried to throw a ball on purpose there. But when I was throwing off speed, it was like, oh, it's taking a while to set it up and then throw it. So that might be a little bit of a technique. Make sure that both of your both both times that you're setting to throw a pitch, you know, make sure that that timing is the same because I never even thought about doing something like that, but it can help you on offense too. If you start to notice that pattern, like I usually think they're about to throw a ball a lot of the time when they take more time because you got to move the cursor to outside of the zone to be able to throw it. So yeah, again, just a small tip that I was going to talk about these. I like to pay attention to these middle boxes. The pitcher's right there. So I'm looking trajectory wise right for these middle boxes a lot of times. And there it was right there. I, I don't know if that helps out. It was just a weird thing that, you know, you have in the middle of a game and it, it was working. I ended up putting up like 17 runs in the game. So I want to talk about it. I've just been on, I hope I crush one with it with Gary Sheffield here. Then I'm going to end the video because I've been on fire with him with his hands lately. I almost should put back. Yeah, I, I almost should put back in Gallo, but that's one of the things I use to help my timing, man. Um, you know, it's all about pitch recognition. 
go into this mode like mlb the show 15 mode take a look at your guy's swing see when he locks up and uh use that to help your timing out watch the stride uh a little bit you know watch the ball watch the ball but you can use the player's stride that he has like i i don't know this posey's i love this posey by the way uh this is one of my favorite cards i've had in a long time but you, you can use the stride and you can use the player's hands uh, i think the hand position knowing where that locked up hand position is really helps i'm gonna go ahead and end the video here though drop a drop a like if you guys like the video thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys in the next video peace out